An effective vaccine could mean a spike in interest rates and return to some pricey metro markets. This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 147 of The Real Word. Word is up. Word is up. We got two heavy topics, both of these. Yeah. Pretty well, heavy. Well, first, I feel like I have to do like a, like a, like a, like a real word, like, mm. like, a, like a confessional. Oh, a little teaser of what's coming before maybe, the end of the year maybe. there. If during this podcast, because how many people do you think actually watch? Do you think people are watching or do you think they're listening? Mm, uh, I think it's 60-40. Uh, what does that mean? 60 watch? No, no. Listen. 60 listen. Yeah? 60% listen. You, who, so who do you... Really? It's just... Yeah. Unless they're listening but watching. I think even people that are watching are listening. Right. Of course. <laughs> um, I... What's your confessional? Get to it. If my, if my face starts changing... During it, the show? It's supposed to. That's What's all. it going to change into? Well, I put some, into I, a pumpkin well, here. I put, What's I put going some, on? I put some self tanner on this morning because I oh, forgot okay. to last night. So we'll see how that works. During uh, the show, is uh, it like uh, what? What is those things that change color over time? There, it's like a, a little kid's toy. No? A kid's toy. Do we know? Does it anybody changes know? Changes colors over right. time. I, I don't know. No, I did like a fast one. Like it's supposed to like I'm supposed to change color in an hour. So okay. you like a flower. So we'll see. A flower I'll, maybe colors. maybe I'll review it on Instagram. I'll let everybody know if it was a good one. Or I guess more timely would be a leaf. All right. Anyway, big, first off, big, actually, big news. Before we get into the two rackets, you got to go over and this. If you're on YouTube for sure, you got to go over to the the Real Word new YouTube page. We we've, we've been hosting on our one and company our team page. By the end of the year, we are no longer going to host these videos on this page, the one in company, if you're on YouTube. So uh, go over and like the Real Word page or subscribe to that one because that's where all the new content is going to be and a new new series. A new wrinkle. A new wrinkle. The confessionals. We'll, we'll talk about that more later. Let's get into these topics because I think they're both pretty they're, pretty heavy. They're They're big. All right. Racket number one. What? Well, I think I should say that they're oh. both very important. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. I'm glad you got that out. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Racket number one. What a vaccine could mean for the U.S. housing market and real estate. An effective vaccine could mean a spike in interest rates and return to some pricey metro markets, economists and agents told Inman. This is a Patrick Kearns Inman article. We'll link it up, of course. And of course, you've been paying attention. You know, Pfizer announced last week that they had a vaccine that was over 90% effective. And mm -hmm. then Moderna, just this week, same thing, as recently as Monday, mm -hmm. announced that theirs was over 95% effective. So that's really good news for the health crisis. Great news. Now, uh, I guess there's a study more than... You Will know, you be getting that vaccine? Uh, we'll talk about that when it comes out. You know, I want to see the results, but are you? All right. Anyways, moving on to housing, <laughs> how this would affect housing, uh, an impact on ho home affordability, the news of an effective vaccine, which in turn means a potential light at the end of the COVID-19 uh, tunnel. tunnel, which which I think is we, we all agree would be fantastic. Yep. Uh, it's good news for the economy overall. So you would think great news for the economy. It's got to mean great things for housing, more people with jobs more people being able to move about, earn income, that should translate into more people buying homes, right? Of course. That's like the common sense way of thinking, I, I would, would imagine. Think. Yes. Uh, an effective vaccine, according to the Redfin chief economist, would mean more employees would return to work and could, consumers could spend money. And so that's what we're talking about here. But there is a caveat to this. However, a strong economy also likely would mean interest rates may start to rise. Here's something that's not in this article. I'd encourage you to go to go Tom Ferry, Ivy Zellman podcast. Ivy Zellman is one of the smartest people in real estate. She and she mentioned something that like would be contradictory to what we've been talking about. Fannie and Freddie have said Fannie and Freddie have said uh, the interest rates, the mortgage interest rates are going to stay the same. Uh, in 2021 as they are right now. They're under three. They're ridiculously mm -hmm. low, historic lows. Mm -hmm. She said, mm -mm -mm, not so fast. Watch that 10-year treasury, uh, the 10-year bond. That is usually in correlation with what happens with the mortgage rates, more so than what 
Fannie and Freddie say, or more so than what any of these other articles believe. She says, mm-hmm. you got to watch the tenure. She, yeah, she actually said, if an agent walks into my home and, and doesn't know how to talk about the tenure and things like that, I would slaughter them and they would never get my listing ever. Hmm. If you're not educated in this kind of stuff, she says, uh, you're definitely not going to be an agent that I would hire, meaning her, Ivy Zellman. So if you look at the tenure, and let's put that up here. We can put the CNBC you know, chart tenure, and we can go back the last six months. The tenure is on a, it is ticking up. It crashed down. Maybe we go back, let's do the tenure for the whole year. So if we could do that tenure for the whole year, that little chart, that crashed down. Interest rates crashed down, obviously, with COVID. And right. now it has been on a slow tick up. It did go down today with the market crashing down today. This is... Well, but it's interesting because it Tuesday. just went up just a few days ago. Yeah. Yeah. The interest rates did tick up yep. with this news. Right. And so ticking up, we're still, folks, we're still at... So low. The historic lows. So it's not like we're, we're going, up, going up crazy. But if you're locking in right now at 2.75 or 2.85 or... I've, I've even... I saw somebody recently... Uh, just get locked in at 2.65. Well, or if you, um, I have someone that's in the Navy, so they did a, um, a uh, oh, see now I sound, see now I sound stupid. Oh boy. You know, Well, never you didn't mind. say anything, so you don't sound that stupid because you didn't it. say anything, so. Forget it. Uh, it's going to come to me later. Right. It's because I'm on the spot here. So 265 I've seen, I'm sure people have seen crazy, crazy numbers, but if you go, say, let's just call it 275. Mm-hmm. If you go to 325 next year, mm-hmm. it's still a historic low, 325. Right. But we're still talking a half a percent up. That's a lot of money when you just compare your loan at 275 to 325. I think people that are locking in these low interest rates right now, the end of 2020, that are buying this winter, yep. are going to look really smart come this time next year. Right. I have a feeling we've been talking about these interest rates are going to stay great for us. I have a feeling with the with the good news in the, in the health crisis and other, you know, real estate's been really good. We're going to see these go up. It'll impact people's it's going to impact the market in a couple different ways. One, it'll impact people's home values. It always does. Mm-hmm. Usually rule of thumb is 1% uh, increase you know, up in a mortgage rate would be a 10% pullback in home values. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like rule okay. of thumb, just generally speaking. So we could see that, but we'll also probably see sellers less willing to sell. Here's why. They're going to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Just three months ago, I was getting this number. Why would my house be worth less? I'm not accepting less. And and they may refuse to budge. And that could create like a little bit of a stalemate in the market. Well, it's interesting though, because it's this has almost been like, and by the way, it was a VA loan. But anyway. Okay. Um, did you know the rate or did? Or? Yeah, that they locked in at two. At two? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, not long ago. So there anyway, um, it's interesting because I feel like this whole thing has been like a, like a, like a squeezed in like 2008. Remember like, we're still finding people now like their prices are still not where like they could have been in 2000 and like five, 2006, 2007. Have you run into we sellers just, that are still some, like certain price ranges. You know, 15 yeah. years ago, I could have like, what? Like we're yeah. still talking about this? Still in Connecticut. People are still <laughs> thinking about those years. All the money that they but, lost. Yeah. 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 And it's funny because I'm I, sure I, in your market as well. Yeah. I, 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 yes, I think though that I think the people that were sort of on the verge of selling though, this pushed them over to sell. I don't think that anybody that, you know, needs extra time to sell or people that, I, I think that the people that sold these years and maximized their profits were the people that were going to sell. It just probably fast forwarded it. Um, I, 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 st- I don't know. You still think they're going to be low? I think they're going to be low, but but over three would the be rates, different than where rates, we're at right now. I think now. that rates are still yes. I still I still think that yes. I still think that rates are going to be lower. Um, I don't think that I don't think that sellers need to worry about. Again, I, I can only talk about Connecticut. There's a lot of demand, and, and this is what the Realtor.com chief economist. I still think that you know here in Connecticut, people are just so happy that their homes are selling. Yeah. Obviously, if they're selling for over list price, that's a bonus. But I think that in this state, particularly, people are just happy that they're moving. Right, but we, we are expecting uh, more people to get comfortable with the idea of selling their home next year. The people that have been thinking, that'll increase inventory. Yep. And if people are stuck on their price and then interest rates go up, people can afford less. I could see a scenario where, where there is a little bit of a stalemate. 
maybe for a three month period, maybe, you know, un- until we kind of Well, and those are out. the people that really then obviously don't need to sell. Right. Yeah. You if, get that a lot here in this market, Canada abs- Shoreline. Absolutely. And I'm sure other markets Absolutely. People, so people I'm saying the, the people way. that have maximized this opportunity are the ones that have wanted to sell, needed to sell, hmm. were willing to sort of move. I mean, I have tons of sellers that knew that this was the right time to sell. We pushed the we pushed the envelope way high, but they still got way more than they ever would have right. expected. Yeah, you know. Here, here's a Realtor.com chief economist, Danielle Hale. Uh, Danielle Hale, sorry, Danielle. Danielle. Uh, she echoed that same sentiment that we're talking about the potential where the interest rates could could go up here. Uh, news of an approved vaccine is likely to lead to higher mortgage rates. So so now we have multiple economists kind of lining up saying the same thing, yeah. which could dampen buyer demand. I think the buyer demand's strong, but I just think they're going to be able to afford less. So I don't know if it'll dampen it, but it'll it'll definitely dampen how much how much they can afford. Somewhat as affordability becomes more of a challenge, Hale told Inman, but I don't expect, she doesn't expect a huge pullback in buyer demand, which has been quite strong. I agree the demand is there. Yeah. Here's what's interesting. Rich Barton. I think it's still kind of hard, though, to even know. I guess I feel like the the rate will stay. I, I think this winter will be very interesting. Because, again, these this 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 vaccine, it sounds like... like a while you, away, yeah. A, a from, while. From, from actually being widespread in, in terms of, like, right. you know, probably end of 2021, we'll, we'll see you more You and I would be able to get it, it if we wanted it. Right. Yeah, yeah. something like that, yeah. Right. Uh, so Rich Barton, though, here, here's something that's interesting. He, he said this on his quarter three uh, earnings call with Zillow. Rich Barton, obviously CEO of Zillow. He believes this this time frame, which is going to last quite a while, it's here to stay in his words, is the great reshuffling. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, on, his, on his company's third quarter earnings call, he, he was very clear that he simply stated people want to move. That's debatable. I think once you move once, you're like, oh, I don't ever want to do that again. Right. <laughs> right? But uh, he believes people for the foreseeable future want to continue to move, which is going to create no matter. I mean, he's kind of pushing against and he's biased. Obviously, he wants he wants the market. He w- wants to be bullish on the market. Mm-hmm. He's pushing against this theory that interest rates w- would impact the real estate market at all. He feels like there's such a strong demand for people who want to move. This is a huge reshuffling. It's going to continue. I mean, if you really listen to Rich, he believes what Zillow's doing is going to create more transactions than ever before. The ease of the transaction is going to create the ability for people to move more and more. I mean, if the transaction gets easier, who's solving the problem that moving right. is actually very difficult. Right. Uh, s- fixing all your bills, re- right. your addresses. Right. All, there's a lot of different things that Packing. go into moving. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so uh, I, I just thought that was interesting from Rich, uh, worth noting. There's a lot of good stuff in here. They go on and on to to kind of get into like, w- what is this going to mean for open houses? What is this going to mean for in-person showings? Yeah. I haven't here locally and maybe in the comments you guys can share with us if you've seen you know, any real health concerns in your market between, you know, with showings or even open houses, we've taken all the safety precautions. Everybody's masked up. Everybody's, you know, washing and, and, and social distancing. So in our market, I haven't, I don't know if you have, have you heard of any instance locally where a, a real estate agent or a house that's been shown has, has caused a potential positive no, case? No, not me. No. no. And, and I'm still doing, I mean, we're still doing open houses every weekend too. Yeah, but yeah, no. we, we are here. And Parade of Homes, like we did a Parade of Homes here in town and that was wildly sure, successful. Sure, we did Parade of Homes. A lot of people came through. It was. We were t- I think it was over 300 safe, people sort yeah. of went through all these homes over the, the course of the weekend. I, 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 again, I think there's so many things to talk about here. I, there's I a lot to the to there, this. Topic. There is because I, I think that we have to get through the winter because I think that there still may potentially be a lot more restaurants and stores that close down through the winter, depending on what your state is requiring in terms of shutdowns. I do think though that there's going to be a lot of companies that aren't going to require their employees to have to come back to an office. So yeah, people are. I think generally speaking, the vaccine could help commercial. You're talking about restaurants and offices. It could help commercial absolutely way more than it, than it 
could impact oh for sure i mean i'm just excited about the vaccine so my kids can go back to school but but again i mean they're talking about more people going back to work and i think that that is true but i don't necessarily think that they're going to be going back to work in an office space though either so that and that's really what's allowed all this movement to happen all of these transactions is that people can now work from home exactly so and and i don't see that changing i i see even if commercial real estate is affordable, I still am. I still believe that these corporations are why, like why like let's and maybe that's where Rich is going, going with the uh, reshuffling is that people are going to continue to move, you know, out of the cities and, and, and into other areas and, and location has become or, less. Or you know important. what though, like I don't have to. You know what? I've always wanted to live in Utah, yeah. and I can still do my job here in Connecticut. You know, this is yeah, now yeah. my chance to move to Utah. So it's yeah. not even necessarily a matter of like like being in a city or out of a city, but it's really now about maximizing your experience on this earth because you know how the, have right. the no, ability that's very to true. do that. Yeah, people and yeah. people are doing that. People are taking action on on going to that state they've, they've decided to go. I mean, I know tons of parents that are renting houses in Vermont for the winter because they know that they're not like yeah. why sit home if they could w- remotely teach their kids now you can rem- like teaching your kids remotely is an option I mean hello so you've wanted to live in Florida half of the year this may actually yeah. finally be your opportunity to do that because your kids well, will not now miss school <laughs> well because they'll never go to school right <laughs> I mean really miss school. Though, there is no school. I mean it's all very different now uh all right so not a racket vaccines no, are not a racket no. they're, they're uh hopefully gonna help a lot of people and, and we'll we'll see what happens with interest rates because of that yes. racket number two this one's very interesting and this and, one sort of slipped in I and mean, this one here we maybe printed I'm it just, out maybe I've just been in my homeschooling world the comments on this I mean, one lots of comments lots of comments we're gonna get to those at the end NAR passes ethics changes to crack down on social media harassment the trade organization said on Friday that the changes will raise the bar on professionalism and private speech of America's 1.4 million realtors so their annual conference uh, heavily focused on fair housing, all right. And we sort of kn- we've we've known that. Yeah, and there was a lot of different angles, and there was you probably saw a whole bunch of different articles on Inman. This is obviously an Inman article, as well, which we will link up. Uh, but they have cha- made changes to their professional standards. So th- this has to do with racist and discriminatory speech and behavior. NARS 959 member board of directors. What a big board! On Friday, approved changes that apply. NARS Code of Ethics and Standards of Practice to all realtors, to all of a realtor's activities, not just those related to real estate, prohibit hate and harassing speech against protected classes, prohibit all discrimination, not just willful discrimination. So let me read this, actually, this standard of practice 10-5 reads as follows. Realtors must not use harassing speech, hate speech, epithets, or slurs based on race, color, religion, sex, handicap, familial status, national origin, sexual orientation, or gender identity. A realtor that violates the policy would be charged under Article 10 of the Code of Ethics, which prohibits denying equal professional services to anyone in those protected Classes. I feel like you need water. Do you need some a glass of water? Some water yeah. The yeah. policy, Nicole, is effective immediately. Immediately. Okay. Uh, we got the NAR president, uh, Vince Malta. I applaud NAR's, NAR's board of directors and our professional standards committee and their effort. Apparently, this was, you go back to the end of the article, this was debated for quite a while. Uh, Inman asked them why the, uh, the scheduled uh, meeting, which was scheduled from 10 to 12 central ran two hours over its scheduled time. NAR said it is not our policy to share vote counts and specifics about our debate process. So one would believe that maybe this was debated quite a bit. Well, back how could and forth. it not? 900 people and, and you only people? gave yourself two hours. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, that, that, that's a I little mean, crazy. That's ridiculous. Uh, all right, so here's the thing, and, and here's the punchline. Uh, trade groups leaders insisted that to be a realtor by day and a keyboard bigot by night was unacceptable. I think we both agree, obviously. You don't want to be... I mean, this gets into... We, I caught a little bit of flack, actually, on my, on my um, 
Instagram when I put the clip up of we were talking about keep politics out of, out of your business, yes. out of real estate a couple yes. episodes back. Yes. And this isn't politics, obviously. This is much different. This is this is human rights. This is, you know, hate speech, these kind of things. But these types of things often get politicized, right? right? And that's kind of where, you know, uh, one direction you could head with that, where, where it's like, it's better off for, for you as a real estate professional in your community to talk about just that, your local community. You're better off talking about the business that you're actually in, real estate. You're better off giving people the information of what they're interested in doing, buying or selling real estate. What's the market look like? What are the numbers? What's the data? What's the trends? And you're better off following which what you said before the show, the golden rule. Well, yeah, I mean, they, there there were a lot of people here in in the comments that did, you know, obviously some people are really concerned with the fact that this is against like our First Amendment right, but it 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 really isn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like people are kind of angry and they think it's like this crazy slippery slope, but like they just like we're they're just requiring people to be nice people. And the golden and rule is do you know. To one, what you you know expect uh, right. to yourself. Type. It's just be like you, and then it's like, well, how? Who decides what's hate speech? If 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 you're concerned that someone is going to misconstrue what it is that you're saying, then maybe you should delete it. Like that well, should not be posted. Like, and here's the thing. Let's get into some of the comments. I think I think they're worth. I think learning. the comments are very are very. It, they're they're enlightening. So Morgan Carey. CEO of Real Estate Webmasters. Kudos to NAR for their leadership on this. He was one of the first to comment. Uh, we, we've got another agent here, or potential agent. I'm, I'm actually not sure if, if this person's an agent. Bold step that was needed. Very proud. You have a lot of that. Great job, NAR. Uh, this was a bold step in the right direction. Right. Uh, you have a lot of those types of comments. and But then you, you have comments like this. What is discriminatory speech or conduct? I think there is obviously certain instances you could say that is clearly discriminatory right uh it's open for interpretation and therein lies the pandora's box opened by nar this is just one person's comments this is yep. not not our thoughts and you can go and, and read the comments for yourself realtors should embrace uh should brace themselves sorry for the potential avalanche of complaints uh, substantiated or not about to hit them by complaints that are not even required to disclose their identity this is why two episodes ago I, I said, don't talk divisive politics. Don't talk in, in a hateful manner for sure. That, that, would, that would be ridiculous. Don't be racist. I mean, that, that's obvious, I, I would imagine. Should be obvious. Y you would hope. But here's where I would say I don't necessarily agree that we're opening up Pandora's box, but who ultimately is going to be the judge and the jury? If you well, look it at, sounds like they're still trying to work through that. Yeah, it, it they does are, sound like they are definitely still trying to figure out who is like what. If you read at the very end of the article, they do disclose the fact that they're still trying to figure out yeah how how they're going to you know uphold this and you know all of that. Yes, but but here's the, here's the thing. So so if you're if you're if it's an obvious. Uh, racial slur that should be cut and dry but if it's on the f way on the fringe and maybe somebody's just talking about a topic which again i'd advise you to stay away from that crap and focus on your job but again maybe you're way out on the fringe in a gray area is this going to become a, a, a twitter situation twitter bans tweets that they don't like plain and simple i mean if you can't see that some of them are obvious, obviously should be banned and, and they're hate speech, but then there are some tweets that they just don't agree with and they ban, but they don't do it on the other side. Well, it'll be interesting though. I'm curious to see if all these people really are angry at this and they're, and they're concerned for what you're talking about. Again, NAR is a membership. Like, yeah. I wonder how I'm many I'm just playing people, devil's advocate no, 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 here. No, no, I'm where, hearing where you, but I wonder how many situations. people do, do leave the membership. Like, they, they decide not to be, yeah. they decide not to be a part of, of NAR anymore. I mean, we listen, I, I know an agent I'm thinking of here locally who, who I think would fall into this category very divisive politically online and has said some really hateful things 
about people or even in the comments hateful so that's but, where it like gets people, interesting though too but it but it but again in the end this is here to to really you know make sure that the consumer is protected yeah, but but because but, if you're if you're if you're spewing that are you really now able to like help me pick the right sort of spot to right. like bring my family here's where i'm going with this i have seen it and i've seen it in this market from a particular agent doesn't like the politics of a particular person in dc says very hateful discriminatory things about somebody who comes down with a health disease hope they die seen that in this local market from another agent it was a pathetic post obviously mm -hmm. Would that be considered hate speech? I would say anytime you say, oh, this person just got, uh, ha had a health situation that they die, I would consider that to be pretty hateful, well, right? Well, yeah, I, I, so now, I guess now, that's where it gets difficult though too now because here's they're my talking point, about it has to be w within those protected classes. Right, but, so but, is that a protected so, class? So say it's somebody in a protected class, they come down with cancer, somebody says, uh, I said something very hateful, right? But now say uh, whoever the judge and the jury is agrees with that person's politics. I think that's fine, right? Like it gets, vi it, that's where you can play devil's advocate for this thing. Obviously though, I but think- But just be flipping nice. Right, and I, I think mean, and I think it was- uh, If you're really worried about how you're gonna be misconstrued. It was Melanie Williams here yeah. in the comment section. Who Hi, John, I, yeah. Who I think said this in its simplest format, and this is what we should all be kind of, you know, hanging our hat on. Uh, I think SOP 10-5 is very clear, no interpretation needed. Mm, that's the part I think maybe there could be some instances that, that, that could go against that. But, but here's the part I thought Melanie really nailed. If we all live by the golden rule, we don't even have to worry about it. If you keep this bull crap off of your Facebook page, off of your Instagram feed, off of your Twitter. Well, off of your, like out of your mind. Out of your life. Yeah. And you focus on doing what you would want others to do to you, then I, I agree with Melanie, you'll never have to worry about this. Right. So. But it is quite interesting. I'm curious to see how many people in the real estate community even heard about this bill passing. I mean... Yeah, uh, Hello. <laughs> because it is effective immediately. So, <laughs> and that was done yeah. on the fourteenth. That was almost that was almost four or five days ago. You know, yeah. since now we're presenting very, this on our new YouTube. Uh, channel. Very interesting, but it should be obvious what you should do. You should focus on your community, your economy, uh, and and helping people transact in, in real well, estate. Well, it sounds like you need to start concentrating a little bit more on your tenure too, huh? Mm. If you want to get hired. Yeah. Yeah, like Ivy. Ivy. I'm going back to Ivy. Yeah, I'm trying to loop it back. Around. I would love to get hired by Ivy and on any note, Ivy Zellman. You should check that podcast out. Maybe we can find that and we could link that up to make it easier on you guys. And you should certainly go over and subscribe to the new Real Word YouTube page. If you're on YouTube and you've been watching these videos on our One in Company page, by the end of the year, they're no longer going to be there. So go over to Real Word. We're going to link that up right at the top so you can subscribe so you never miss any of these shows and so that you don't miss our new show coming on that page very soon uh the confessionals it'll be fun the real word confessionals you do not want to miss that so go over there and subscribe so you never miss any of our content by the end of the year the one and company page will no longer host the real word uh we are going to keep that page obviously that's our team here in, in connecticut we'd love for you to stay subscribed there don't un unsubscribe uh oh we'd love for you to stay there uh, that is going to be super local content. We've got some new shows coming there that really speak to our local community. And, and we just want to reflect the audiences. If you just want the real world content, you'll be able to go over to this uh, new page. So hopefully you guys can go over there. Uh, give that a subscribe. And all of, by the way, Nicole, all the old content is already uploaded. Oh, fun. So episode one through 146, it's all uploaded right now on the new uh, real world you know page. We're not you know what we're missing in there? I had, did we do a 100? Did we do a 100 recap? So we're almost at the 150 recap. I just looked at the 50 the other day because I think it just popped up. I think it was like our year. You love these, these recaps. Well, I do. I mean, people, you know, you talk and I just, I like the, I like the Maybe bloopers. episode 200 will do something special. Well, what about 150? No, it's just not a, it's just not a sexy number. Hmm. 200. Well, Gotta go for two. Uh, but that's a podcast. Please go subscribe. And if and if you know any uh, <laughs> real estate agents that, that should be uh, checking out this content, please share it with them. All right? Keep it real, guys. See ya.